Um, yep, we're going to record. Um, so uh, if you're not comfortable having your picture recorded, um, you know, that's in contrast with the please turn your camera on. We don't use the Zoom chat. We use the meetup chat in Slack because it persists after the meeting. People can refer back to things people have questioned or posted. And um, uh, coming up, we, uh, we have our regular meetup the first week of October. Um, uh, we have this lunch and learn will happen again the third week of, of October. And the week after that, it's Drupal Camp NYC. Um, uh, mostly online. Um, there will be some in-person social events, but with the state of the pandemic, the team decided to have the content mostly online. Um, and Holing was just sharing that the session submission deadline, they've, we've gotten some good sessions, but they've extended the deadline. So um, if you have something to share, please do and go to DrupalCamp.nyc .drupal and um, put something up there. And other than that, um, I'm Sean Duncan. I'm the chair and your MC today, but mostly um happy to see you all in person and let's hear what jake has to say let me turn off my screen sharing so he can share his let's see stop share over to you sir lips are moving but you're muted sir now you can hear me right and you can see my screen yep you're great okay, okay. I have a good system in place for this stuff. Um, well, one thing that I have to just sort out is, uh, okay, I can see everyone. I'm gonna move you over here. I see all your questions. Hold on one second. It's nice to see everyone's face. Okay. So in the Slack channel, I just said post questions prefix with a capital Q. You can ask questions while I'm talking. You can interrupt me. I don't mind. It's a very small group. I've gotten really comfortable with that online. Um, I did this session recently because my organization, Memorial Sloan Kettering, is talking about going headless. We have a very monolithic site, and I'll talk about that in a second. And we want to break it down, decouple, but decouple meaning like for us, it's like break down the monolith into smaller parts and make headless implementations. And I've heard about Contenta for years, and I was always feeling like it was a good starting point. I've spoken to Mateo, who's one of the maintainers. Is very insightful and I decided to explore it. And that's what I'm sharing with everyone. Um, I, I'm kind of curious for a show of hands, is anyone doing headless Drupal in this call or? Yeah, but everyone's <laughs> thinking about it would be the, yeah, everyone's going to say, yes, I think I need to do this. I've got um, a project kicking off, so I'm all ears. Okay. And we're, so, we're not doing a headless Drupal. We actually have a client who wants us to do headless, like, from some sort of non Drupal source, so oh wow, all out there. Yeah, we've been doing we've been doing it for a while. Headless. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah, you got. It. So, hey, Jeff. I just see hey, Jeff, Jake. but uh, at least I recognize first. Okay, I'm gonna start. I don't know what I'm talking about, which is kind of cool. Haven't done a headless website ever, but I started researching it, and I'm here to talk about decoupled. Building decoupled Drupal applications using Contenta, you know who I am. Um, I want to answer these questions of, you know, what is Contenta? Why should you use Contenta? When should you not use Contenta? And a big one, what do you get out of the box? How should you get started? What do you need to know and not know? And what are some next steps for using Contenta? So what is Contenta kind of leads to the question, what is a Drupal distribution for people new to Drupal? Uh, distributions are full copies of Drupal that include core, along with additional software such as themes, modules, libraries, and installation profiles. There are two types of distributions. There's full-fledged distribution, a complete solution for a specialized use case. Those are less and less in the community. The one that stands out to me is commerce, but years ago there was a, uh, a newspaper website, um, a, a non-for-profit distribution in Drupal 7. And more and more people are moving to distributions that are quick starter tools or starter points for developers and site builders. In a lot of ways, there's a commerce kickstart distribution, and that's meant to help people start building a commerce site. And Contento falls into the quick start tool, and we'll get into exactly their philosophy, which I think is really smart and boils down to one simple sentence in their readme file. And we're really focusing on headless and, you know, just to level set, headless is an approach to building Drupal sites in which 
Drupal serves as the backend content repository. I think I pitched personally, that's my use case as a content repository. And the front end is built in different technologies and communicates with Drupal via an API. Um, it's a very simple diagram to kind of just show people the separation where APIs sit in the middle. On our teams, we're definitely leaning in the direction of you have backend developers and front end developers, and they're doing kind of different things. And they all talk at the API level. I did this diagram. I have a big challenge. I have a giant Drupal website that's this monolithic architecture where everything is slammed in one Drupal instance. We're talking crazy, crazy stuff that if I was to do it all again, I would never do this um, because it becomes hard to maintain and you're putting too much into Drupal. And decoupled immediately forces you to think that way because you're taking front end and moving it out. And then you're focusing on the back end and content. And I mean, for me, I'm looking for a polylithic architecture where things are broken down into, into parts that can communicate with each other, but you can take a part out and replace it and not take down the whole stack, which is definitely what happens here. Now for headless distributions, what's great is there's some history here that Acquia did Reservoir, which you know was their initial way to kind of give their clients a, a headless implementation using just own API and OAuth, it's no longer supported. Acquia also had Lightning, which is that their kind of starter kit for building Drupal sites and they decided to offer a headless version of it, take the fundamental concepts of Lightning, which is basically Lightning provide, by the way, did provide you with like out of the box media, workflow, support, things that are kind of more in core. So Acquia has actually ended life of, of Lightning and headless Lightning. As these things evolve, Content has been around for three years, and Content has now, frankly, become the de facto Drupal distribution for for headless. And you know, I like their description. It's a community-driven API distribution for Drupal. It provides a standard platform that is API ready, along with demo content and example front-end applications. Content intends to ease the pain of using or simply trying to decouple Drupal. And that's really what it does. Um, they, I'm not gonna get into the examples of front-end applications, but they have invested a lot of time saying, here's how you could build an Angular front-end to Contento or a Node front-end. Um, we're gonna talk about what you get out of the box as Contento as a, a kind of a, a tool to build headless websites. We, we have to thank the people that helped build this. Everyone here has done amazing work ongoing. And I, I have to emphasize how mature content it is. I like the rule of threes. This is the thing I've come up with because I always got upset when I liked the TV show and they canceled it after the first season. I gave up on that. If a TV show makes it to three seasons, it's usually gonna last. If a piece of software makes it to version three, it's usually gonna last. Content is really up to its, its third iteration. Considering it has rolled in things from these other two distributions and has done a lot of refactoring, like improvements along the way. Contenta, this is from the README file. Contenta CMS is a fork and go solution. There is no supported upgrade path. You may update your Drupal like you usually do. This means you're not really tied to this distribution. It's not like it's gonna break things. It all The distribution just says, here's some modules we recommend and all those modules are maintained outside the distribution. So you can start and go off on your own. There's very little content of code in the distribution. It's more like here's a suggestion of modules and configuration and really simple tweaks to the Drupal UI. And you'll see them. They're very clear and distinct when you look at Contenta. I, I would like to say Contenta provides a recipe for building a scalable decoupled implementation of Drupal. And we really get to why should you use, why should you use Contenta and, and when should you not? It's really, if you're building a simple decoupled site, this is absolutely the way to go. It's easy to do, you can spin it up. It's kind of comparable to content full and butter CMS out of the box. Very little you have to do. It, it, there's actually on their website, a spreadsheet comparing Contenta to all the other headless CMSs on the market and Contenta clearly stands up and we all know it has the added benefit of Drupal, where if it doesn't do something, you can step in and add a custom module to do it or even your own authentication. Um, if you're learning how to build a complex decoupled website, it's a good starting point. This is a good recipe for the modules or concepts you need to think about. 
you shouldn't use it if you have a coupled site. There's no way to kind of bring this into a head full site. It's too, too difficult. It's too opinionated toward decoupled. And even with progressive, I would caution you from copying a lot from Contenta because that's a, and frankly, I find progressive websites very challenging to do right because you're kind of targeting two different things at the same time. When I say progressive, it means you're rendering things in Twig, but then you have APIs in your field, you have presentation data, it, it, it gets really difficult. So let, let's get into what do you get out of the box. Um, this is the breakdown of the modules and it really does help give you a roadmap where their content provides modules, enhanced Drupal's administration, content authoring, and then it's, and this is standard from almost every Drupal site we build, but then it switches over to authentication, APIs, documentation, and performance, all targeted around exposing APIs, letting authentication happen, documenting those APIs, and improving the performance of those requests coming in for APIs. And these are the admin modules. And anyone new to Drupal, I just want to point out, like I've been doing Drupal for years and years and years. And frankly, I sat there and went through every one of the modules. I didn't kill myself on this. I, I went through the list of modules, which is in Composer just own, looked up the module, grabbed the description, and just get an understanding of the overall system that you're getting. It's one of the best ways if you're evaluating a Drupal site to walk through those modules. Sometimes if a module is done right, the first paragraph should tell you what it does. So these are two modules people should all be familiar with. Admin toolbars, just drop down, environment indicator, Every website should have this if you have a dev environment. Just tells people they're on a dev environment compared to production. Um, for content authoring, I appreciate what they're doing here is inline entity form is great for content authoring. It allows you to say, here's a bunch of related nodes and I wanna edit those related nodes right in the node edit form that I'm working on right now. It probably should be included on every website. Video embed, the Contenta team realized that media was one of the most important aspects to decouple Drupal, like getting that right and making it fully available. So they did video embed because people are going to push YouTube videos into API, into their APIs, and it just provides a system to organize it. And also cropping, and they, they add stuff for image styles, but you, everyone's gonna to wanna to crop images. Um, Pers and what I like is personally, yes, this is a crop API. At the same time, I use focal point, which is an amazing module. I think Alex Bleen, one of the people in our community has been maintaining, it's incredible. It, so you put, I can almost draw on my head, you put a point and then when you start cropping, it starts focusing on that crop. Um, it's an amazing module. We've had a huge success with it. Authentication, it's simple OAuth and consumers is kind of, a, require, a dependency of simple OAuth. It's the idea that you need to define who's going to consume your APIs and how are they going to access it. And for APIs, it, we're using, content to use your own API, which out of the box, it's provided by Drupal. That's a core module. And they're enhancing it with little things. Just so RPC, Drupal doesn't just expose, it exposes some of the web services, but doesn't create an index of all of them. And the JSON RPC module makes it easy to see everything. And that is a content of philosophy that everything in your system is exposed in the API. You have still have access controls, but they just felt that that was the smartest way to go. Out of, just expose everything, nodes, blocks, configuration, anything. Now the JSON API extra allows you to alter that exposure, what the URL is, even what fields are exposed and how they're exposed, like the formatting. It's a very critical module. And the decoupled router just helps with SEO and consumer image styles, another challenge. You have images and you're gonna share them. Well, what about thumbnails and how do you expose those in your APIs? Um, for documentation, they're using open API, very standard. It used to be called Swagger use a schematic to get the serialization. And frankly, I don't know much about what the schemata module is doing. It's good to know it's there. Performance. What I know is the concepts here. They're doing cache warming. So it ensures that when someone makes a request, it's gonna return it as fast as possible. So when you update your site of clear cache, it'll warm those API endpoints to make sure the data will be readily available. And one challenge, and this is something that we all have to just, own in Drupal is doesn't handle a lot of requests as well as Node.js. 
So they have a sub request system so that in one request, it can go out and get extra pieces of data. Um, in the Contenta ecosystem, they actually have a Node.js proxy to even boost performance. And it's something definitely worth considering. And frankly, possibly putting, I, I think a fundamental concept on enterprise would be putting an API gateway in front of Drupal so that that handles the, the caching and, and maybe even some of the authentication. It's Drupal. Some modules aren't including Contenta. I just wanted to point out some key ones to consider is GraphQL. People are definitely using it. Um, it's a different way of querying data. For authentication, if you're doing a read-only system, OAuth can be a little heavy. And you could use J uh, just own web tokens, or there's this key auth module where you're just giving someone an API key. When I say read-only, they're just looking at public data. So really, the reason you want to, and I just want to emphasize something, don't, I more and more lean to it, don't give people anonymous access to content because you can't track them. You got to give some authentication so you know who's accessing your APIs. I've got burned by opening up anonymous APIs because then if you change something, you have no idea who you're impacting. You can't send out an email and say we're upgraded or anything. So you do want to have some authentication system. Another big thing is an integral part of content is to provide an out of the box content model and demo content ready for you to start working with. The demo chosen by the community is a recipe magazine. It's Umami, it's the Umami demo that's in core. They're taking that content and using it as examples. It's a great, I'm so happy that Core went with Umami, a recipe site, because it's a great content model. I love that recipes is one of the most popular content types on the web. I mean, it's, and it, it needs structure for it to work properly. So it's like a perfect, you know, like blogs, eh, blogs don't need that much structure. Recipes need structure. You need to define what are, what's going on. We'll, we'll look at the recipes in a second. How should you get started? I'm kind of throwing the crawl, walk, run metaphor. It's, I've used it, I learned it in personalization where you just want to start simple and gradually get more and more complex. Um, Contenta is easy to install. There's a quick start to install via PHP. You can install it locally. I have a non sequitur here to talk about Pantheon and using a Contenta upstream. And I'll, I'll get into that if I have time. I think I'm going to pause before I go in the non sequitur, take questions about what I showed, and then I'll keep going. But what we're going to do is we'll explore, you need to explore the UI and UX, the, the toolbar, the administration experience. The documentation is there's built into content and on the website. Anyone doing headless should be aware of Postman. That's a tool to call APIs. Not going to go into it, but it's like, just keep it in the back of your mind. And, and frankly, you got to think about content models. At the end of the day, that's one of the most important things to decouple. How is your data structured? How is it maintained? And I will get into it in a little bit. So for exploring content, I think it's interesting. The, the module breakdown kind of is a good way to explore it. We want to check out the toolbar, the administration tools, content authoring, authentication APIs. I'm not going to go through everything. I'm going to just walk through and, and try to get people kind of started here. So I have my Contenta site up and running. I actually am going to log out. It, it, it's very plain and vanilla. Comes with the demo content installed. It gives you a starting point. You can revert it. It sh exposes the APIs, which is nice. Let me see if I can get this little. Oh, cool. OK. So it exposes the APIs. I can, I'm going to come back to this API in a second. There's even tutorials. This is all public content, videos. Um, they're just aggregating different resources on the web. A lot of work, I think they go into a lot on, yep, how to make just own API requests, which is for an advanced user, you're going to want to do that, filtering and tweaking those out, the, the data you're getting out of Drupal. Um, I'm going to log in. Something you'll notice is uh, Contenta switched to using the Claro base theme and moved away from material, so less dependencies. And you'll see the toolbar is, is very different than you're used to in Drupal because they're, and this is one of the only things the Contenta install module is doing is like, it has an alter hook to tweak this toolbar to make it kind of decoupled focus. And it, it makes sense is you wanna look at your content. And we're familiar with that. Hold on. Oh, you can look at your content. I have demo content. Let's just look at that. There's a recipe for Thai green curry. Gives you a very basic 
look and just look, it shows you the API, the raw data you're going to get. Note how clean this data is where it says preparation time, instructions, it's not using Drupal's field, underscore, or anything like that. This is all done in the Jasonian API Extras module. This is the data a user would get with all the relationships. You go to the edit form, very simple, matter of fact edit form using the media library, which makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm going to keep going back up. Media, very simple, nothing special going on in media. They're using Drupal's media out of the box. They're just turning it on, respecting the importance of using media. Um, I think what's key for media is the fact that you can add metadata to it. Drupal's image field makes it it's not as easy. In media, you can add a lot of rich data to these thumbnails, even external assets. Now you switch. So basically, they're going in and saying, well, modeling is the most important thing. They're pulling it out of Drupal's structure section, saying, here's your content models. You'll notice underneath the hood for recipe, we have our standard field authoring names. I would like to note how clear they are on naming conventions. For example, they keep fields very simple. Field author, cooking time. Well, cooking time is a pretty accurate name. But when they get to things like category and instruction, they realize they've got to be a little more specific. It's field recipe category, because you could have multiple content types that have category and field recipe instruction. Very, like this is very deliberate thought out examples. Um, all the standard stuff where you have displays, you're not going to, with the headless site, you're not going to do a lot with it. This is what's just going to be rendered when someone views it. We go to APIs and get into the documentation. So let's look at recipes. If I do a search for recipe, content recipe, things I, there we go, basic page, recipe. I'll admit this has been a little jumpy Let's get into one of these and I'll show you. Here's, sorry. Okay, here we go. Example endpoint that's not gonna work, but I'll show you how to start accessing your data. And I kind of just appreciate how simple this is. You go to API recipes, you get a list of every recipe on your site. If you click on an individual one, you get an individual recipe out of the box. If you need to pull, so for example, if you need to pull metadata, use something called includes. I'm not going to go into this, but this is all stuff in just own API. So if you need, like, for example, it tracks the, let's use user ID. It says this user authored this content. And here's the unique ID and here's how to get that information. At the same time, well, no, this is, sorry, new to it. You actually, that's where you can use your own API to say, get me all the user metadata. Don't give me the UID, give me the ID and all their information. This is all, what's great about just own API is it's very well documented on drupal.org. To reinforce that everything's exposed, if I go to slash API, everything is exposed here. You're seeing every content type embeddable Cuisines, this is every file, every image, every asset, every menu, every path alias. Um, going back and continuing along our little demo, access controls, once again, very similar. We know this stuff. Users, permissions, and roles, and all they're doing is adding clients and tokens. Clients are OAuth clients. So you're basically saying this is a user who's consuming, they can access it. Here's the image styles that they can use, that they have access to in their APIs. And tokens is really tracking who's accessing your data. And I think that's, I wanna emphasize, don't do anonymous APIs. It's, it's crazy, it's, it's a mistake. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll, the benefit of anonymous is you can get a huge performance gain because you can kind of cash the hell out of it, but then you run into other issues. All right. So we've walked through it. Reports make sense. We're going to push up reports here. Advanced, guess what? That's what we're used to. That's the standard toolbar just tucked away. And you have access to all your standard Drupal stuff. 
And the last one, local, is literally just um, the environment indicator telling us what server we're on. And on production, this would say production. I'm going to keep going. Oh, there's one. So give me the superficial thing. The one module that's very important to look at is I'm going to go to advanced configuration services, JSON API. This is the JSON API extra module kicking in. One, it can do little access controls. Once again, you can have a read-only site, which I think is a great approach. Two, extras allows you, one, they're changing the default out of the box URL for JSON API for namespacing is JSON API in Drupal. But if you're doing a headless site, I think you want to have an API namespace. So this gives it to you. And then it allows you to override each endpoint. So look at what's happening with recipes. I click edit. You can disable the endpoint, but more importantly, you can go in and say, these are the fields visible. And here, I'm going to change status to is published because is published actually makes a lot more sense to the real world, not status. They even go in, these are the unchecked. These, when I love this part where if it's checked, it's disabled, kind of goes against the pattern. But let's focus on the ones that are enabled. You can go in and see field number of servings. And by the way, I think this is a typo in my opinion. You would want to have it um, lowercase and then capital, capitals. Um, you can even go in here and change the output of each field. You can massage that data if you need something extra. Um, okay. I'm going to keep going. Do we have any questions? Because I have a non sequitur, which I'm going to save to the end, maybe. It could be in chat or on the... And I can drink my coffee. <laughs> well, I have a basic question about the mod or about the distribution. You, know, yeah. you said it's a, a collection of, of contrib modules for the most part. And there seems to be a module specific to the distribution that does a little bit like adjusting the toolbar. How do you think it's easy if I were, were to try to recreate this distribution in my current distribution? In other words, I look at the Composer JSON, add the same modules, do all the same stuff. Yep. Great. Very, very easy. Yeah. The, the module is glue code that literally that admin toolbar change was primarily it, and the rest of it is configuration. It's very self-explanatory. You are giving me an opportunity to my non sequitur because I approached Great. it that way. So the not, okay. Um, I used, so my organization, so Kettering is doing headless and I wanted to make it easy for people to get started to give them a content instance. And Pantheon offers free developer environments. Like you get three out, you sign up and you get a free developer environment. And I just have a good relationship and they gave me uh, the ability to create upstreams, like it's a partner. And an upstream basically means I can go in and have a template for building websites and say, I would like to create a Contenta instance and it will copy code from GitHub and put it into a Pantheon sandbox and then I can give it to someone. And the upstream, it acts as a, I just got to promote this. It acts as a scaffold for new sites. It is way better than multi-sites in Drupal. The idea here is you have a master Git repo that then as you start creating sites, those sites know about the master repo. If you need to implement code changes, Pantheon says in their UI, I would like to pull from the master repo and then apply updates. It solves so many problems for maintaining hundreds of Drupal sites off a standard code base. That standard code base could be a distribution. It could not be. It could be a set of modules. It's a way to roll out core updates. And what I can demo for it is Basically, I can show you, well, one, in my UI, this is this is this instance of Contenta that I showed you is an upstream. So I can apply updates. And what that means is it's going to go out to my repo, which is here. This is a ridiculously simple repo. It essentially, and one thing I did in this repo is a lot of documentation. Jed, so in the docs file here, I have notes like README. I think I even Ooh. documented. Well, one installing it, there are three or four bugs. They're all documented here. Known issues. Um, GraphQL, if you enable it, won't work. I think the module is missing. The settings for the upstream is a little off. Um, you need to enable patching if you want to tweak it a little bit. Uh, and oh, 
consumer image styles, you know, you want to enable it. It's kind of, it says it's optional, but it's a hard dependency. You know, this is idea that I'm just tracking all my changes for my organization. And then I'm also tracking articles I'm reading. Um, what, I want to go back up one. Command demo. Oh, and the, all the modules that you saw me talking about, they're all noted here. Um, oh, Jed, this is the list of what the Contento module does. It alters awesome. the admin toolbar. Minor enhancements to the admin theme CSS. They're fixing some bugs. So add some additional local tasks, some minor tweaks to the node edit form, and it enables cores. Oh, I should spell that correctly. Cores, which you have to do anyway. So yeah, it's, and then it has the magazine. And frankly, I think a lot of the hard work is done in that demo content. Um, You're as thorough as can be. That's awesome. Thank you. Yep. Uh, there's not much else. Yeah. Oh, and it's if you like Pantheon, I, like I I'm going to give Pantheon a plug because they really helped me out with this in, in the sense of like, I've been documenting things, but if I go to contented commands, it is, and I'm using Lando, it's like there's a whole sandbox, like list of all the little commands you would need to get this up and running, adding modules, removing modules, pulling it down. It's just awesome. All right. That's great. There's my non sequitur. I, I'm they deserve credit for this. It's free for you to try it. And if someone on the call wants an upstream pig, if they want Contenta and just want it working, they can ping me and I'll give them access. Keep in mind, then you're dependent on my code. And if I go away, you're, you're out of luck. But it's a good way to get started. Okay. That was a fun non sequitur. I needed that. So Jake, <laughs> it, it, it sounds like a lot of what's actually in Contenta is, I mean, there isn't, there isn't a ton there. It seems like a lot of the the real nitty gritty stuff is in the the standard Drupal distro. Um, you know the umami is there, um, JSON API is there. Um, so, you know how much is really Contenta and how much is just base Drupal? It's just Contenta is more about an opinion with configuration, and that's it. And it's a good opinion. This Mateo, these guys thought this out if you hear them especially around media that part i gotta point out like i just don't think anyone else thought out media as well as they did and also the documentation like they they looked at all these areas and did all this research and were like we have to get media right like the the image styles i can't emphasize i've used other systems headless image styles and thumbnails come up over and over again how do i generate them how do i manage them um so the configuration is non-trivial and it's not code. It's not, it's not a bunch of extra custom PHP code, but the, the configuration you're getting from Contenta is setting up Drupal properly to be a headless CMS. Yeah. If, if I was doing this in the enterprise, I would, um, it's all content to export the, like I, I would fork and go, like I would totally consider it a fork. And I love that they, they're the first people in the community that I saw say fork and go as a distribution. And it mitigates the risk of distributions that we all run into. Like Lightning's not supported. Hopefully no one from Aqua is on the call. But boy, does that screw some people. <laughs> I mean, you have an entire site. If you went enterprise with uh, Lightning and did hundreds of sites, that is a pickle of a problem you've got to sort out. Um, yeah, it's really hard. I mean, it's possible to change your base distribution, um, but it's, it, it, it's a task. And I, I had a project assigned to me once where the people I were working for thought that we would save money by extending a distribution. Um, extending yeah. a distribution with a lot of custom code, major pain point. So this is, that's, su I'm super encouraged to see that fork and go philosophy. Jake? Yep, and, and I, I, about understanding how distribution works, you just wanna look at the composer file. It lists out the modules. And then you wanna look pretty much at the config to just see what they're suggesting. Um, I love distributions. It's how I learned a lot of Drupal along the way. Like, yeah. I mean, if I was doing a commerce on mod project, I'd start with that commerce kickstart and look around. And, and I mean, that one's an interesting one because that's a paid service. And if you're hiring them, you're gonna get good support. So that that breaks the fork and go rule where it might be a good approach. Uh, let me keep, well, we're, yeah, we're great on time. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna wrap it up in 10. 
uh, just things you need to know. Just basic, just own API requests, just start simple. Make a request, you can massage it. I called like, the way the requests work is you call the URL and then you can add parameters to that URL. There's one called include, and it says include extra metadata. Um, there's also filters. You definitely wanna do simple OAuth authentication just to test it out. Content modeling best practice, I cannot emphasize how important that is. I have some dedicated slides to it. And that everything is, ex I think this is really important to own. I have made this mistake, own it. Everything, every field, every piece of data assumes it's going to go out to an API. Even if you're not doing it, just so you account for it. Get your data right, because if you get it wrong, you're going to have problems. And then you're going to say, well, can I version my APIs? And that's a whole other thing. Yep, naming things is really hard to do. The best approach is to follow common standards and best practices. I have strongly advocated for this. Settle on schema.org. It is an open standard for modeling data. The recipe examples is using this. If you're not familiar with schema.org, it's as simple as, and I'll just go to the recipe example and read this. It's a, the spiel is it's Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, all working together to say, this is how we want to model data to drive AI, to improve, you know, like what they're doing. And you can go to an event, Here's an example of how to structure an event. It has every possible field. Personally, I want to build a CMS where literally it says the word offer as a field. I copy this in as the description and I'm done. I don't want to reinvent the wheel over and over again. It makes no sense to do that. 90, I'd say 85% of what you need is here. And then you have your edge cases. There's no presentation logic. That's a little challenge. You know, think about it. this is about data. So if you want to say hide and show doctor numbers, which I ran into, there's no field for that. You have to kind of add it. And frankly, I recommend solving that outside of this naming convention. But it is completely thought out and available to you. Um, that's what they're doing in Contenta um, to just finalize it. I just want to point out recipe. Everything you possibly could imagine is here. And yeah, you know, like ingredient, that's interesting. Oh, it's a single ingredient. So you start to see the different patterns they have here. I'd have to look it over. It, it's a pretty amazing standard. I've done some work with it. I have not launched a CMS that's modeled off of it. We've tried and that's a whole other story for another. And it's not schema's fault. <laughs> Psychor, whole separate Read my blog in a, a week or two. I think you guys are going to inspire me to talk about that. Boy, that's a good topic. Of this. <laughs> I could do a whole other lunch to learn on that one. Holy moly. Okay. That's very funny. Okay. Some API tips. This is interesting. I'm contradicting something that everything's exposed, but you know, keep in mind your interfaces need to be stable, reliable and stable. What you're exposing can't change. Limit what information is exposed is a pretty accurate thing. You assume it's all exposed, but really use the just own API extra module to turn off fields that no one needs to see. And, and this is an interesting one, which I haven't gotten to, but if you're consuming data, be flexible on how that data comes in. Uh, hold on, I saw something on Slack, so, okay. Um, okay, versioning. I've gotten this question a lot, and this is Vim Lears, one very respected person in the community, on a ticket that asked about that for just own API and says GraphQL requires you to not remove any fields and only add optional non-required new fields. You can already do exactly that with just own API. So I can't, just own API does not support versioning. You can't say I have version one and version two. Frankly, if you really got yourself into the bind, you're going to have to create two instances of Drupal and say, here's version one of my APIs and I have migrate to version two because I'm restructuring it. I think it's really important to follow this philosophy. Don't change your fields once you've exposed them. Get it right. I, I, yeah, that that's not an API issue. That's that's a Drupal uh, restriction because if you remove fields, if you remove uh, if you change content types, those fields go away and it breaks your API. So that that's a that's a Drupal kind of underlying Drupal issue. It, it is, but I also appreciate that GraphQL 
kind of took it on. Facebook made a decision not to do versions. They went with this approach where you model your core and then you add fields. So I, I, I haven't done enough API. I, I have seen this problem, but I haven't done enough to sort through this. I definitely have done this pattern where you have, you basically add field and never change existing ones. Um, oh, I expect it as we move more and more to headless is to be a real challenge. Just things you don't need to know, like CRUD operations and APIs for most sites starting out aren't, unless you're building something that really needs it, you're talking about reading data. And enhancing contenta, I just wanna throw out, like there's advanced content authoring that could be worth exploring like paragraphs, embeds and input filters. I don't think you need that when you get started. Um, so some next steps, I recommend installing Contenta. You, everyone should really at least spend a day dabbling in just own API, even on your current site, turn the module on, make some read, you know, if you don't use, if you don't disable things, if you turn on that module on your site, you're gonna be able to look at your data models. So you're gonna be able to browse around, check OAuth, explore the contributed modules and, you know, start building your content models. So thanks. We're at 46 minutes. Uh, oh, and I have a, a four and a four because I added one slide in the middle of it, like right before I came on. Um, questions? You got, one, you got one question in Slack. Okay. Oh, how easy. Uh, uh, okay, so I haven't used it supports image styles. So inherently, if you name your image styles correctly, you could do responsive images on the front end. You're kind of defining the, the variants that you want. I frankly haven't used it yet. I just haven't gotten to that point in this process where I'm more interested in the APIs. But, but what's inspiring is when you hear the, the maintainers talk about it, They're, they've invested so much time. They're so aware of that requirement that I don't know if your response, you know what? I would suspect that Drupal's responsive images module, I forget what it's called, is not really exposed through APIs. There's an assumption you're gonna to have to re-implement that in your front end or in your SDK. Um, yep. Yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna implement your image styles in Drupal because th those images can be served on their URLs. Yep, but, the, but that whole like- uh, the generate, the Generating the responsive image markup Probably yeah, the breakpoints um, in the Contenta ecosystem. Yeah, I also once again I don't. If I go to Contenta CMS uh, on GitHub, we're only looking at one. We're looking at this main repo. That's what I've just demoed. They have all these examples of different integrations and and how they want to do. You know, recommendations on helpers for GraphQL. Um, Holy yeah, shit. Jed, yeah, I, I recommend starting here. Cause also what, what I think Jed, like the example is if you brought this into your headless site and you brought in a lot of content, next time you run into an issue, you know where to go to look for a possible solution. Cause there's a thought here and people are very responsive. So, and this is, this is one out. I've got to emphasize that in terms of decoupled Drupal. So this is where anyone who did headless, you know, lightning and reservoir has moved to. Yeah. Well, between you and, and Contentful, this is the most documentation or best documentation I've seen in a very long time. This is fantastic. Yeah, I, I'll admit that um, yeah. they have me beat. You know, I do a lot of documentation in web form, but when I logged in and I saw this like starter page, I was like, damn, this is impressive. You know, and all this goes away. This is a node you can edit. You can delete this at any time. Like they just thought out that how do you make it the best possible experience for someone to start? It, it's, it's brilliant. And awesome. All right. Wow. So keeping the back of your mind, that's always what these presentations are good for. <laughs> someone says to you, what's headless and what should I do with it? This is, yeah, tell them to start here. Okay. So, I got 10 minutes. <laughs> I, I, okay, do you mind me taking another three minutes? It's like, Jeff, have we even spoken in months? No, and I was gonna check in with you because one of these days we should get together for a drink while uh, 
anytime. While, while things are still open. Yeah. Anytime. But like MSK, my client, I don't mind on private. I mean, is this recorded? <laughs> um, it, it is, but we can also, your presentation's over. We can stop the recording. Yep. Stop the recording, then I'll just tell a yeah. hilarious story. <laughs> just like, 